It's simply a Bluetooth controlled proximity relay switch and it can be used to control just about anything. It just connects to your phone over Bluetooth and then everything is controlled from your phone. It's incredibly easy to set up and this is just one example of how it works. Hey guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hello and welcome to the channel and I hope you like today's video. If you like smart home and automotive technology content, then hit that subscribe button because that's what you're going to see on this channel. Today's video is going to be a very short one and I'm going to be reviewing this Bluetooth controlled proximity switch. I just thought I would do a short video for anyone wanting to know how one of these work. So what is this then? Well it's basically a relay switch. It is controlled by your phone over a Bluetooth connection. And how the proximity part works is when your phone comes into range with the device, the relay contacts, which are by default open, will now close. And then of course, when you take your phone away out of the range of the device, the relay contacts will then open again automatically. However, it can also be controlled manually as well, just like a normal switch from within the Bluetooth settings of your phone. This is a really clever little device that can be used to do a lot of really cool things as well. For example, I thought it could be used to make a really cool car immobilizer device. So when you walk away from the car with your phone in your pocket, the car would be automatically immobilized and it would not be possible to start the car until you return to the car again with your phone. That's just one example though. There's obviously many other things you could use it for, but some slight modifications may need to be done to it depending on what you're going to actually be using it for. This device is also really easy to set up as well is there's only four wires to connect. So you've got these two wires here, which is just your positive and negative for the power supply input. And then these two wires here are the relay output, which you connect the device to that you wish to control. This particular switch needs to be powered up from a 12 volt DC power supply. For example, a 12 volt car battery. But when you buy the switch, you actually choose the switch based on the voltage you want. So for example, if you wanted to use it on a 24 volt truck, you could just buy the 24 volt switch. There are a few different versions available of these switches online from different suppliers. They seem to start at 5 volts and then go up to 60 volts DC or even higher. This switch is a wet contact design, meaning that when the relay is triggered, there will be a voltage supplied to the output. And the output voltage is the same as the input voltage, so for this particular switch, that's 12 volts DC. Of course, the output can be set up as dry contact as well, by simply just removing this little link here. So as I said before, you may need to modify the switch to suit your needs. The onboard relay is rated at 10 amps at 250 volts AC. So at 12 volts DC, I would expect it to be about 25 amps or around about there. And the maximum distance of this Bluetooth device is said to be approximately 8 meters. But that will vary depending on the environment. And after testing it, for me, the distance was far greater than that. Okay, so what about the app and how does that work? No, there is no app that you use with this device because it's not app controlled at all. It purely works as a proximity switch over a Bluetooth connection with your phone. So you just connect the device to your phone over Bluetooth using the six digit pairing code that is supplied with the switch, which by the way cannot be changed. So the name of the device that you'll be looking for in your Bluetooth settings on your phone will be eSwitch. As you can see there. Just enter in the pairing code and you're connected. So yes, as you can see, this is a secure device to use as well. And it's cheap as well. I paid about $16 for it with free shipping and I received it in about one week. Okay, so once the device has been connected and paired to your phone, this is how it works. I'll start off by showing you it connected in a dry contact scenario, which as I said before, is just using the relay contacts by themselves to open and close a connection. So here I have my multimeter connected to the relay contacts which are open by default when the phone is not connected to the device. So now when I tap on e-switch, the relay contacts will close as you will hear from the continuity feature of my multimeter. And now when I tap on e-switch again, the relay contacts will open as soon as the connection between the phone and the switch is lost. Okay, I'll do that one more time. I 
I will just make it clear here that when I say the Bluetooth connection is lost, I do not mean the device is no longer paired to the switch. I just mean I have physically turned the Bluetooth connection off between my phone and the switch, as you have just seen. And for those of you now wondering, yes, you can break the power supply to the switch. And when reapplied, you will still have a Bluetooth connection between your phone and the switch. So let's try that as well. It's broken now. Now reapply power. And try it out. And everything still works. Okay, now, as I said at the beginning of the video, this Bluetooth switch is set up as wet contact. So the relay will supply 12 volts to the output by default when I tap on e-switch. So let's try that. As you can see on the multimeter screen, there is now 12 volts, as the phone has now got a connection with the device over Bluetooth. And that 12 volts will be lost when I tap on e-switch again, and the connection is lost. I'll just try that again. So that's how the switch works by default. Okay guys, now I'm outside at night and I'm going to do a test on the proximity side of this Bluetooth switch because we want to know how well that works as well. So it's probably hard to see in this light, but I've actually mounted two little LEDs up here just outside the window and I've connected that to the device and plugged it into the cigarette lighter as you can probably see in there. So now I'm going to walk, well actually what I'll do first of all is turn on the um, LED so you can see. There, as you can see that's on there. Turn it off again. Turn it on again. Okay, now what I'm going to do is walk away from the car and those LEDs will turn off. So, let's go. Sorry if this filming is bad, I'm walking backwards and I don't want to walk into someone so I keep on looking behind me. So the little LEDs are still on. Still on. And they turned off now. Ah, uh, no, they're not. They're still on a bit. And they've turned off now. So as you can see, that's quite a distance. It's definitely a lot more than 8 metres. But as I said before, the distance is definitely going to vary. So now I'll walk back to the car, and the little LEDs will turn back on again. As you can see, if you look at the phone, there's no connection. So I'll try and keep that to the side so you can watch both at the same time. Okay. And the lights come back on now. And we've got a connection on the phone. So we'll stop there. Can you guys see that in this light? Probably not. And we'll walk away from the car again. Still got a connection and the LEDs are still on. And they turned off now, and we've got no connection. So we'll walk back to the car one more time again. Sorry for this filming, I know it's not good. The lights have come back on now, and we've got a Bluetooth connection as well, as you can probably see. So, it's still quite a good distance, I'd say it's a lot more than 8 metres, 
But anyway, that's how the proximity side of this Bluetooth switch works, guys. And it works well. Okay, guys, so that brings us to the end of this short little review on this Bluetooth proximity switch. So I hope this video has been useful to anyone that has seen and are thinking about purchasing one of these devices that are available virtually from just about anywhere online. As always, I will put a link to where I purchased mine from down below in case you want to buy this particular switch, which I have to admit, I am really impressed with. It's been very reliable when testing it for me so far. As I've already said, you could use this to basically control anything you want to. It does come with this little box as well to mount it in if needed. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel where you can watch even more videos, which I upload every week. And I hope to see you all in the next video.